This is chapter nine of Intermediate Accounting, and we're gonna deal with the retail method for estimating ending inventory. The retail method is an estimation technique that's based on what happens between the cost and the sales price that exists for a lot of retail organizations. And oftentimes when you talk to someone in part of a large chain, they don't even know the cost of the item. They only receive all the information at retail. So in order to use this, you need to have the total cost and the retail of goods purchased. So you need both of those, the total cost and the retail of the goods available for sale and the sales. And there's a lot of information that's going to be kind of repetitive with the gross profit method. There's a, you know, it's an estimation technique and the gross profit method uses the gross profit percentage. This retail method kind of gives a weighted average idea. So what you're going to do is you're going to start with all the information that's here. And this is uh, just categories, one for the cost and one for the retail amount. Now it's not really organized at this point, it's just listed. But what we have is things that we talked about before when we talked about purchases and net purchases. And you have purchases freight in and purchase returns all combined to become net purchases. But we haven't really talked about markups. There are times when an item is selling so well that the company, the retail outlet, increases the price and they'll have markups. And then they might have a markup cancellation. Maybe it's not working as well and they bring it back down or other factors come into play and they've got a reason to cancel those items. Those are different from markdowns. And there could be markdowns and markdown cancellations as well. For our purposes for this example, we're just gonna call them the net markdowns. And then with other items, we've got normal spoilage, breakage, other kind of things that happen to inventory. And notice we know these all at the retail price. We don't know what the cost is. And some of them make no sense to have at the cost. So the markup and the markdown are based on the retail price. So that doesn't change the price that we paid for the item. So there's no reason to have a cost there. It only makes sense to have it at the retail method, at the retail level. So now all I did was take that information from the previous page and put it in a different organization. You could have one column for cost and retail. I like them in separate columns because it just makes it easier to see. So if we take what we have already said is the purchases, purchase returns, and freight in to come out with the net purchases, we can just go ahead and put these items here. And we'll put them here at the cost and the retail level. Now, at the retail level, notice we're putting markups, net of cancellations. I believe the markups were 9,000 and there were 2,000 in markup cancellations. So together, you end up with the 7,000 of net. So just a little practice for you to get used to doing nets as well. And basically what you end up with is all of these items in each column are added together and they become the current year addition costs at the cost in the retail method at level. When you add beginning inventory plus your purchases, you're gonna get goods available for sale. We've got them at the cost rate, which is the state we would use in the cost of goods sold formula, but we also have what's available at the retail level. And by taking the 330,000 divided by the 498,500, you end up with 66.2%. That's your basic markup. And what it does is it gives, it's a weighted kind of thing based on how your company is doing. And this, is, by the way, is called the conventional method. And the idea is we care about markups. We're not going to put the markdowns in there because conventionally speaking, the retail was affected by the markups. So if we know that cost is 66.2% of retail, then we can kind of follow along with the same formula we've been dealing with, and that's been goods available. Remember, beginning inventory plus purchases is what's available. 
available minus ending inventory gives you cost of goods sold. And we can use available minus cost of goods sold to get ending inventory. So now we know where we're heading. We've got, we know what goods available are here. We've got 330,000 as what's available for sale, but we're working on the retail side. So if we take the retail side and we back into our ending inventory at retail, we can back into our ending inventory at cost. And once we know goods available for sale and we know our ending inventory at cost, we could find the cost of goods sold. So how do we find our ending inventory at retail? Well, we can't possibly have any more than 498,500 because that's the maximum that was there. And again, remember, the conventional method cares about the markups as part of the percentage, not markdowns. So markdowns kind of come later. They don't worry about those in terms of coming up with this percentage. So we're going to take our, our beginning, goods available for sale, take out our markdowns, we're going to subtract them, subtract out the items that spoiled and broke, and subtract out what was sold. By the time we get all that done, we should be left with how much is left at ending inventory at retail. If we take that amount, that ending inventory at retail, and we multiply that by 66.2%, we end up with our ending inventory at cost. Now, this is the same example, except the conventional method cares about markups and mark, not markdowns. But the cost method says, let's be careful about both. And so we start the problems the same way. We end up with net purchases, and there's nothing different. We end up with net markups, net of cancellation. That's the same 7,000 we used a minute ago. What's different is this 4,000 markdown. It's a markdown, so it's negative. It also, in the prior example, in the conventional method, was here. We moved it up, and what that does is that makes it part of the percentage. So our goods available at the cost are 330,000, and our goods available at the retail are 490,500. That gives 67.28%. So the cost method says, you know, markdowns are a part of life as much as markups. Let's stop this, including one and not the other, and then put it there. And then so we've got retail goods available of 490,500. So let's get that down to what's ending inventory. Let's take out the breakage. Let's take out the sales. What's left must be ending inventory at retail of 81,500. Multiply that by 67.28%, and we end up with ending inventory at cost of 54,833.